Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overall series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. In this episode, I hope to bring landers to Mars, Phobos, and Deimos on the same launcher. And that is thanks to the fact that we now have a Delta IV Heavy with, with additional uh, fuel cross-feeding. In other words, normally a Delta IV Heavy does not fuel cross-feed from the boosters into the center stack, but I am doing so because it uh, boosts my Delta V up. And it would, of course, in practical terms, be a little bit more complicated for them to do that. And probably the equipment will weigh a little bit. Uh, so that uh, would tilt the balance, perhaps. And, of course, cost and who knows what else for R&D. But, uh, yeah. So I am pleased to have this uh, launcher that can carry heavy loads. Actually, uh, technically, the Delta IV Heavy without the fuel cross feed would be able to carry this payload into orbit anyway so it's all right and part of the reason for that is because instead of using the DCSS the Delta cryogenic second stage uh, that the Delta IV Heavy normally uses I am actually using a Centaur stage which is actually smaller than the than the DCSS the DCSS is about 30 tons uh, the, the um, Centaur stage is about uh, 20 tons worth of fuel so uh, the total payload is uh, 30 tons here. And there's the payload you can see here. This is the Centaur stage. And uh, I've sort of removed the, and you can see lots of struts because I'm not taking any chances with this. Um, I've sort of removed the, normally the Centaur stage itself has maneuvering rockets all on its own. And of course that helps to uh, make sure that the Centaur stage can restart, which it has to be able to do. Uh, instead, I've sort of removed that and set that stuff into a separate stage of its own here. And uh, this is actually a decoupler here. And so it really is a separate stage of its own. And that's because I need this to be able to do maneuvers once we get into the Mars system. And so it'll help us do the maneuvers to uh, adjust our orbit once we get to Mars. Otherwise, uh, this stage, its, its fuel is going to boil off on the way to Mars. It's just, just too long a trip. It's uh, liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. There's no way to keep it hanging around. So we do need um, a service module type type uh, fuel, you know, the the storable fuels, right? And so MMHN204, monomethyl hydrazine, and nitrogen tetrox tetroxide is the best way to go. And here we have three landers. Yes, this is insane. Okay, uh, two of the landers are identical. These these top two are the Phobos and Deimos landers. Uh, this bottom one is the is the Mars lander, and the difference is that it has six one kilonewton thrusters instead of just three. And so let's go to uh, Duna uh, Delta V and stuff such. And uh, you can see uh, it only shows the top lander right now, and the top lander has a thrust weight ratio of 0.7, max 1.4 for uh, for Duna. And that means that this lander, which has more fuel, has closer to one thrust weight ratio at the beginning. And so it's, it's also heavier, it has more fuel, which means it has more than this 2,214 meters per second of delta V. But it will take a long time to burn that fuel. So that's a catch that I have to pay attention to. Okay, um, they each have independent communications. They each have RTGs, as you can see as well as solar panels and uh, the scientific experiments that they're carrying is just a gravioli seismometer and the temperature scan so so not much I mean, we're not carrying goo or anything like that but this is sort of a first attempt at uh, this sort of thing and of course this is very complicated as it is so we don't need to overdo things uh, you recall that I tried to land on Phobos before and ended up coming into the Duna system backwards which meant that I couldn't land on Phobos because I would have to adjust my inclination. And as a result, I tried uh, landing on Mars itself, and that failed because I lost communication and didn't have enough Delta V. Now, our communication system is much better now. I also am not using signal delay, which uh, will help. And let's face it, on the first attempt to land on Mars, I think it's fair to try it out without signal delay. Uh, it's just me, you know. Uh, maybe it's safer that way, just trying it out. Uh, later on, I'll add signal delay once I actually figure this stuff out. But uh, first time, first, uh, I'm, I'm not using signal delay. Oh, that's something I wanted to do. I wanted to add some drag shoots onto this thing. Uh, I don't know if this is going to cause problems, though. 
Nah, you know what? I, I for for this try, I'm going to do without the parachutes. I think that's probably the best bet, and that's because I want to see how much delta V I need in order to make an actual landing. Okay, so we're not going with parachutes on that. Let me just check that everything else seems to be in order. I think I'm missing an antenna on this one. Okay, basically uh, this whole part is ends up being a mess up here because of the way I've connected it all together. Basically, they're all going to separate apart simultaneously. There's no way to avoid that, the way I've got put together up here. And so once they get into orbit uh, around Mars, they're going to be independent players. But we'll get to that when we get to that. Alright, so this is a pretty tricky sort of mission and interplanetary of course. I'm going to try and do it all at one go but it might end up being two episodes. Probably I'm imagining what's going to happen is everything up to uh, Mars capture will be the first episode and then everything uh, to do with the landings will be a second episode uh, if I even get to that. Alright, well let's uh, go ahead and find out. Okay, so I've uh, lined up with Mars, of course, and I've also done the typical ploy of matching inclinations with the moon in order to sort of uh, get right with the solar system. And, of course, we're launching out of Cape Canaveral. Seems appropriate if we're going to use uh, this Delta IV Heavy X, with uh, X being the fuel crossfeed. All right, well... Everything looks good. I'm going to make sure I remember that the roll has to be 90 there. All right. Uh, I think we're ready to go. So let's go. Okay, off we go. Lots of uh, thrust weight ratio on this. And of course I could... Uh, as they do with the Delta IV Heavy, they actually uh, throttle the center engine down. I don't think I need to do that with this. Um, again, because the, we've got the fuel crossfeed making it easier for us. Uh, not only just easier for us, but it also means that the center stack is heavier once we uh, get to the point where the boosters separate. Unfortunately, I haven't put any lights on anything in terms of the payload, so we are going to aim for daylight landings. I think that's reasonable. I don't want to be landing at night. Not on my first landings on these bodies. But it might be a little bit tricky to figure out uh, both getting the t the daylight side as well as making sure we still have communication back to Earth. Oh wait, uh, I forgot. This rocket goes up very fast. Come on. We need to rotate, 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 rotate. Okay, one thing I haven't mentioned is that I've replaced uh, procedural fairings 3.09 with procedural fairings 3.08. In other words, I downgraded my procedural fairings in the hope that maybe that'll have better effects, but I'm still not going to decouple until I reach orbit because uh, that's just safer. The fairings are once again very large and I would be worried that they hit something otherwise. Five seconds to booster separation. Okay, booster's out. Actually, early. Huh. Anyway, okay. On we go. This rocket is quite, uh, quite convenient to fly. Very quick to orbit, of course, uh, because it's, well, it's just quick. Got good acceleration and all that. Also, not much lag, because, uh, first of all, it's just loading three copies of the same engine at the base. Not many engines to load up. Fairly simple. Okay, so we're coasting up. Uh, we've got a good apoapsis this time. 
Uh, just barely out of the atmosphere, but that's fine. We're going to be doing an inter interplanetary transfer pretty soon, so no problem there. Of course, it wouldn't be very good to uh, have that orbit if we were going to park the payload in orbit for a fair amount of time, but no problem there. So, yes, and our fuel situation on this stage is very good. We've got plenty of margin to spare. We will not, I mean, there was an, always, always an option to light the Centaur stage in order to help us get into orbit. Plenty of time for that as well, but uh, in this case I don't think we're going to need to bother with that option. Okay, getting ready to shut down. And that's all I can do. Okay. So, not ideal, but still a good orbit. Now, let's see about this fairing separation, shall we? Uh, maybe we'll get into the light first. No, no, uh, let me do fairing separation now. Better that way. Uh, Alright, so we're going to see whether downgrading procedural fairings... Now, uh, in the changelog for procedural fairings, it says that the 64-bit uh, bug where it... Uh, decouples badly, which we've seen in this series so far, was fixed in 3.06 or 3.07. So this is now 3.08 and I had been using 3.09. So I don't know. Uh, it should still be fixed, but I guess we'll find out. Anyway, here we go. Nope. <laughs> uh, I've got, I mean, I guess I've got a different 64-bit bug then. It's clearly a 64-bit issue because uh, the fairings work just fine in my colonization series, right? I've been using them there anyway. Now you might ask me uh, why I didn't put lights on. It's basically because I forgot and I didn't want to bring this back into VAB to find a place for lights. I really didn't have enough time. Okay, now with that, those fairings off, we, we can separate the the core stage, the launch stage here. And I'm gonna do that in the dark as well. So here we go. Throttle is down. Off it goes. Very nice. And finally I'm going to extend some solar panels. Hopefully they don't clip anything. They're they're not the the long ones, they're the flat ones. And Actually, it's a funny thing, they seem to produce a lot more electric power than the ones that extend straight out. I don't know why. Okay, anyway, I'm going to uh, plot for Duna and then bring you back once we are close to that node. Okay, so I initially plotted my own transit to Mars uh, slash Duna and it, it looked like it was going to cost about 4200 and get me to about, oh, I don't know, about uh, 200, uh, was it 200,000 kilometers? Or was it, I think it was 200,000 kilometers. But, um, but yeah, I decided to try out uh, this maneuver planner, the new Mechjeb pork, pork chop selection thing. And uh, so basically, just to show you what I did, just in case you haven't used this before, um, you know, uh, why don't we, come on, reset the thing. Oh no, it doesn't like to, it doesn't like to reset once, uh, you've got a parabolic or orbit. Uh, I'd have to get rid of my maneuver. Anyway, it, it worked out. I clicked this little, uh, area here. I had to zoom in first because it was uh, way too big, but I clicked this little area here. You see departure in one hour and 38 minutes and the Delta V was less than what I had. And so... Yeah, it gave me that, and it's got me on a crash course with uh, Mars slash Duna. And so that's pretty good. I'm impressed. Uh, usually Mechjeb hasn't always given me the best uh, transits, uh, but that was a very long time ago. I haven't used it for this purpose for a very long time. But uh, here we go. We've got uh, transit, and hopefully, I think it is a crash course. So um, let me... Uh, I'm going to let it use its reaction wheel control power to uh, line me up here. And I'll see you at the node. 
All right, you can see the Centaur stage and the probe lander stack here a little bit better now as we are in light, though still uh, somewhat shadowed for some reason. Anyway, uh, just checking Delta V here. Looks good. We've got plenty of Delta V for this burn. And uh, so six and a half minutes total stage time means probably about five and a half minutes I think I think five and a half minutes will do so we'll start at four minutes let's say okay here we go and let's check fuel stability if you'll let me very unstable okay uh, so I'm going to uh, light the eight rockets on the on the Storbles stage. I'm going to use those. Oh, oh, okay. Now that's very okay. Whatever works. Actually, I'd like to not have the Storwell stage continue. And the easy way to do that is just to shut off fuel to them. Because I don't have those rockets action grouped. Okay, a little bit past. Wow, that made a big difference. Okay, uh, yeah, we burned a little bit too much. Okay, here we go. Gonna shut down the RL10s. I'm going to turn on fuel flow. Right there. And now I need retrograde. Okay, still a hundred thousand away and uh Took about 20 Delta V, and that's because I'm still carrying the whole Centaur stage with me. Not too sure why I'm doing that, but maybe I'll have a reason. Okay, we're lined up. The fuel flow reads very stable, so I'm going to turn off the fuel flow to the to the one kilonewton rockets. And activate this engine interesting activation sound and we can do the burn right now oh why is this it looked like the periapsis is going up but that's not what's supposed to happen let me do the rest of it well l let me wait a little while that's suspicious. Okay, now we're right on the node. Still very stable. Let's try this again. Okay, there we go. Alright, that's close enough for... well, no it's not. I really wanted to keep the Centaur stage tagging along, but I don't think we're going to make it at this rate. Ah, we'll keep it tagging along. Okay, uh, let's stop spinning. Alright, let's depart Earth and make the further adjustments in interplanetary space. Okay, really, Mechjeb is doing a much better job than I can. I just let it do it. Fine-tune closest approach to target. 161, 11.2 meters per second. And I am going to decouple the Centaur stage. I don't see any way I can use it uh, going on. Even though it's got a thousand Delta V to it. It'd take uh, Delta V out of this little maneuvering stage in order to uh, in order to boost it 
Okay, there goes the centaur stage. Now let's uh, pick up the maneuver that MechJeb plot for us. Okay, crash course. That's good. Alright, on to Mars. Okay, here we are in... Okay, well it's not really showing my... What the heck is it doing? Ooh, it's a little bit jittery. Hold on. I don't know what's happening to my periapsis. Um, we're here. Oh, it says at launch pad. Oh, that's not a good sign. Okay, I, I, I sense a glitch, so I'm going to quit out and come back in. Yeah. Okay, it's not letting me quit out. You're moving over the surface. The game cannot be saved at this point. Last save was... 210 days ago. Yeah, I, I know that. Sure you wish... No. Okay. Huh. What does this mean? We appear to be correctly over Mars. The altitude is correct. We have a periapsis reading here. Just don't have an indicated orbit here, and of course this this issue. We clearly need to correct our inclination. We're going around the wrong way, but there's no way I can do that like this. Okay, I'll come back once I've solved it. Okay, so reloading has brought my mission all the way back to Kerbin uh, on an escape trajectory. So yeah, I'll just do everything I need to do to get us back on our proper path to Mars and I'll meet you again once we get there. Okay, we have entered the Mars sphere of influence and we are going very fast, there's nothing nothing more I can say about that we're going extremely fast and so it's going to be very hard to get into a proper orbit around Mars without overheating we are already at a pretty good periapsis you can see 30 kilometers there but that's a little bit too deep I would like to plot to raise that a little bit higher in the previous video in uh, my failed attempt to land on Phobos I ended up aiming at uh, 39 kilometers and that was pretty good uh, but and it's a big one uh, the problem is that we are going so fast that maybe that's not enough to capture us this time but I'm going to try and aim about the same so there's 38.46 kilometers We've been pretty good. We, we've been perfect with uh, communication uh, all the way to this point. I, of course, will expect that we will lose communication when we end up on the opposite side of Mars from from uh, Kerbin, and uh, of course that will happen right at periapsis. Which is why that happens to uh, Mars probes so often that we lose communication when they're supposed to make orbit. It seems like that is a pattern. Anyway, let me get into this node. Do the correction. We can't really correct for, for inclination the way we are right now. At least we're going in the correct direction. But if we can... I don't know where where are Mars's moons there they are uh, you can see that we cross the the orbit of either Phobos or Deimos 
right at our periapsis. So, <clears throat> excuse me, there really isn't any opportunity to correct that from out here. We'll have to wait till apoapsis uh, once we do make orbit. All right, let's continue. So lots of glitchiness in this mission so far, but we've made it to this point. Let's keep going. Eh, I'll go for that. 38.5 kilometers. Might get too hot, might not capture us. Who knows? We're about to find out. Place your bets now. Indeed. Uh, I'm going to retract solar panels as well as the AIES antenna. All of which are vulnerable in the atmosphere. Hmm. It appears that the clouds are going the opposite direction than the planet's rotation. I'm gonna have to fix that. There's, there's clearly some negative sign or positive sign that needs to be changed. Wow. We're approaching 6,000 meters per second. 6,000 right there. So basically this fuel tank down here is acting as a heat shield. Really I should have added an actual heat shield but uh, but didn't do that. So we're going to be using that fuel tank and let's monitor the temperatures on that tank. Possibly the... Oh, clicked away. Possibly the RCS ports will be most vulnerable, but we'll see. Unfortunately, we're going to lose connection as we reach periapsis, so I can't do uh, emergency burn of any kind should the unfortunate happen one way or another. So we're going to have to take our fate. Let's see what happens. Actually, just in case, uh, maybe I should quick save. This is a rare case where I'm going to do that. Okay, here we go. We seem to have uh, encountered the atmosphere. Temperature is rising, still going faster, approaching 6,500 meters per second. Not sure if we're going to get captured. Flame effects, I will stop with time warp. Not really slowing us down much right now. Come on, Martian atmosphere. Temperature looks all right, assuming all all the RCS ports and thrusters are all right. Within a thousand meters of periapsis. Still way, way, way too fast. Not that hot either, surprisingly. We are past periapsis now. This was way not enough. <sighs> nope, not even a chance that we're going to make orbit like this. Okay, so you know what? I am going to load the quick save because we're not going to let this just uh, go out and there's no way to... Well, okay, hold on. Uh, l let me let me at least try after we regain connection to retro burn. But I don't think we're going to get a capture like that. 
Uh, yeah. So, no. We can't do it like that. And it was pretty cool, so... The, the texture is really annoying me. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try and load up the quick save and aim deeper into the atmosphere. Okay, so I hope you don't mind me doing the loading quick save thing, but I think it would be the best use of all of our times if I actually manage to do this. I'm going to aim for 36 kilometers this time. Okay, I'll just keep it there. Alright, so let's try this altitude and see if it works better. Still remarkably low temperatures. I thought that when we tried to bring the Phobos probe through the atmosphere, it got a lot hotter than this. Are the procedural real fuel tanks like really resistant to heat or something? Let me check the thrusters. Oh, this is positively chilly. Well, I don't know what to do. Seems like there might be something wrong here. I, well, can't argue. Well, we're past periapsis now and, you know, not only did, uh, was it cool, but it didn't slow us enough. Well, it might work still. I don't think so though. What does FAR have to say about all this? We don't seem to have much drag. Isn't that fairly low drag? Reference area is right. But I would expect drag on the other point two. Yeah, there's something wrong here. We should definitely have slowed down much more and possibly bur burned up. And we didn't. Still got an escape. Well, you gotta play by the rules they give you, so gotta try one more time. I'm gonna head really deep into the atmosphere. Okay, I'm going to definitely posit that there's something wrong with drag in this case. Obviously nothing to see right now, but um, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to retro burn again. Okay, we've lost connection. I was able to get to 32.7 kilometers, and that's it. This probably won't work, and it is a problem with the drag coefficient, and so I'm going to have to take a look at what's causing that problem possibly something to do with FAR. Now, this is an old version of FAR of course because I'm still in 24.2 so it's possible that problem has been fixed but uh, the fix is not available for this version of KSP especially since it is KSP 64-bit and the more recent versions of FAR do not support 64-bit. This isn't uh, nearly enough drag. So I will take a look at what's going on here. This is quite strange. There's overheating on some parts. Wow. That's incredible. Who knew? Um, so so it's just it's just this part. It's just the procedural real fuels tank. Yeah, I think that's what's going on somehow this doesn't have the right drag coefficient on it and that's of course that's the only part that's really encountering drag so that's the problem if I had put some other thing some sort of heat shield or something else that would probably produce the correct amount of drag and we would be able to slow down at a higher altitude and we'd get the appropriate amount of heating. That's a theory, but I think that's probably what's going on. I don't know what parts really got... Well, it should be the fairings, right? The, uh, it was this fairing that actually got heated up. 
so this inner stage fairing well that was the adapter but uh, I'm sure the side fairings had even more heat if I could no oh, they're cooling down now the but uh, yeah all right well I can't do much more than I did this time in terms of uh, lowering my periapsis so I'm going to just retro burn as much as possible and since that probably won't work I'll just uh, we'll try again we'll launch again uh, some with uh, with an adjusted craft that doesn't have this drag problem I might do you know what ne next episode I might do some tests to determine the actual problem okay so right now we are connected and I'm just going to turn on the taps and I'm gonna let it uh, retro burn as much as possible and we'll see what happens probably nothing okay we're about to run out of fuel in this stage and the situation is we're past the orbit of Phobos already and our orbit is not looking like it's an orbit actually it's actually looking like an exit trajectory an escape trajectory and that's that's it so this was a failed mission this time and of course so once once I had to reload a quick save it was really a failed mission already we were just seeing uh, what we could figure out about the cause of the failure in and it turns out it was a lack of drag on this part uh, at least that's my assumption right now so what I'm going to do is start next episode with drag tests on Kerbin not Kerbin Earth Drag tests on Earth. Uh, we will actually launch this portion uh, in the, to a to a reasonable altitude, and then uh, drop it to see what our drag is on Earth, and then add a heat shield and see what the drag is in that case. And then after that, we will launch a adjusted version of this towards Mars, and uh, we will continue this mission at that point. We will make sure that this mission gets underway, but I'm afraid we're going to have to miss this particular opportunity. I'm uh, not reverting to any earlier time, so we're going to have to wait until Kerbin goes around and uh, gets into position with respect to Mars once again. So that's the situation, but we will persist. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.